Hello, and welcome back to my small part of the universe. My name is Hailstone. It has been a generous amount of time since we have spoken last. Today, we will be covering the topic of the Endworm, truly the king of the abyss, and one of its most frightening sights. So please, sit back, relax, and let us begin. Among the many horrors of the abyss, there is only one that sits between all the others as its king, and that is the Endworm. This armored colossus truly has no equal in size or in horrifying visage, at least in the natural world or Europa. The Endworm eponymously gained its name during early expeditions into the Abyssal Plain of Europa, and while it's easy to assume that many of the other Abyssal horrors could have been responsible for the countless lives its submarines lost, the Endworm was the first and only one seen alongside the Triptus for decades. That is, until Latcher started to move into areas that used to be dominated by its larger brethren, which I assume is due to the modern Europa submarines being far better equipped to deal with and even kill off the likes of the Endworm and the Charybdis. Anatomy of the Endworm Unlike specimens on Earth that we call worms, the Endworm is nowhere near close in relation, as many things that are commonly called such never reached the gargantuan size, nor had the sizable armor that was resistant to kinetic and ballistic damage. Though there are many ancient type of worms that had some form of armor that were similar to the Endworm, though they were only typically about a centimeter in length compared to this leviathan. The Endworm's body consists of 16 different segments, each wearing a identical set of armored plates. Four armored plates and eight of what I could only call limb shells that cover and protect its soft body. Along with these, each segment also holds four pairs of parapodia, or at least something that looks like them. On Earth, parapodia are commonly used in bristleworm body plans, a type of sea-dwelling annelid that's at least somewhat similar to the Endworm, at least in terms of looks. Parapodia are used in terms of both crawling and swimming, depending on the form of the appendage. Though those on the endworm are hard to define, appearing as small hook-like feet that run down both sides of the worm's body, excluding both the head and tail regions. These parapodia are likely used by the endworm during times of inactivity to brace itself on the rocky floors of the abyss to prevent possible movement from the current, though it is just as likely that these are entirely useless to the endworm, being nothing more than a vestigial remnant from an evolutionary ancestor. Though, as much as I abhor the thought, I suppose it is possible that the Endworm uses these parapodia as a method to traverse through the large fields of abyssal mud as it digs using its colossal jaws to move debris and silt out of its way, moving around underground even more unseen than usual. Though this being a possibility is more of a benign facsimile and more of a figment of my own fear of worms. Speaking of the Endworm's jaws, these massive external mandibles allow the Endworm to shear and rip apart most other fauna on Europa, and even make short work of the modern metal that make up Coalition submarines, though that is not a notable achievement, considering the rest of the known Europan biosphere. The jaws of the Endworm are modified versions of the armored plates curved and positioned just above the head of the creature, and utilize only what I could guess is a tension mechanism or a complex array of muscles that allow it to swiftly shut these plates close, gravely injuring anything unlucky enough to be near them. Hidden underneath the jaws is a set of 6 to 12 large, seemingly unmoving teeth surrounding a large gaping mouth. Top this set a small pair of eyes, allowing the endworm to perhaps see small variations in light though to what degree I do not know, but like most other European fauna, I doubt it sees anything past that. The last detail of the Endworm is that of its tail and the skin that sits below its armored hide. The tail is of little note, rounded and armored like the rest of the body, and doesn't seem to generate much in the way of propulsion despite the Leviathan's astonishing speed. The skin is almost a yellowish gaunt with roundish patches along it, almost giving the appearance of being covered in holes, though these are most likely the locations where new armor plates are grown from or were simply attached. 
I have also heard rumors that beyond the Great Sea, there are endworms that even dwarf the size of the documented ones around here. They are often called the Doomworm in the many tales I have heard. Though if it is real, I suppose it is little different than a typical endworm, size aside. Diet of the Endworm this one is a bit of a mystery, as I have never actually witnessed the endworm devour anything. Normally, it will either mortally wound or outright kill whatever crosses into its territory, but it never seems to eat what it kills. I have seen this firsthand over the few too many times I have gotten stuck in the abyss due to an endworm encounter, usually resulting in a crew member trying to flee for safety. That, or one of the clowns, decides screw it and relentlessly annoys the endworm with a toy hand with both of these decisions usually ending with nothing but unrecognizable gore and paste, and the endworm never eating what is left. I can also confirm this behavior with the other fauna on Europa, as I have gratefully been a part of a long-term solo study, which is a glorified way of me saying I was trapped for about a month in a shuttle that was wedged into the cliff just between the Abyss and the European Ridge. During this period of time, due to my proximity to the Abyss, most European creatures wouldn't venture down to this area, though I did witness both a glorious and horrifying scene into the last week of my study. I managed to take note of a group of Molochs that had, for whatever reason, descended far below their normal habitat, and before long they had attracted the abyssal creature that ruled this region, in this case, a Endworm. Needless to say, the Endworm had little trouble tearing through their shells and doing away with the poor lot. But unlike other European creatures that would start tearing away at a fresh carcass, the Endworm simply left, thundering into the darkness, and the Molochs it had torn apart simply floated down towards the depths, unbothered. Shortly after this, I was picked up by a passing Separatist vessel that was staking out mining claims and possible abyssal outposts. I have to admit, the Separatists are far better equipped than I had ever imagined, as they had dispatched the Endworm with relative ease. As they proceeded to mine the nearby islands for exotic materials and surveyed the active thermal vents, this allowed me to actually gain a glance at the very same Molochs that were killed not long ago. And aside from the obvious microfauna and other things slowly eating on the bodies there, there didn't seem to be anything missing from them, at least not anything that the Endworm would have eaten. Sadly, I had only a short time to view them before the Separatists had to move on with their surveys. With this knowledge in mind, I can only come to two conclusions. One, the Endworm inhales its food later on, or rips out massive chunks of flesh if they are too large to simply be swallowed whole. It does this by attaching itself to the deceased fauna and then rolls and twists its body around in an attempt to tear off a large piece of flesh to eat. Two, there is a possibility that the Endworm isn't a carnivore at all. In fact, as impractical as it may seem, the Endworm may simply just be highly territorial and be willing to simply kill anything that gets too close without ever eating it. Instead, it may use its massive jaws to sift through the rotting debris, mud, etc. that falls from the higher regions for nutrition. Or it may use them to crack away at the many islands of exotic minerals in order to eat the various ore. This may account for the strong protective plates of the Endworm, maybe being grown by ingesting materials like Physicorium and Dementonite. The Reproduction of the Endworm if the Endworm is anything similar to annelids on Earth, or at least similar to the ocean-dwelling bristle worms, the Endworm may not have so much reproduction as it merely clones itself. Its segments able to break apart if need be and eventually grow a new head and body. Though, of course, this is just one of many possibilities, as the Endworm is just as likely to spit off a mass of its own genetic material in the water to fertilize eggs as it is to use submarines and other corpses it downs as a nursery to protect its young. The Shifting Territories of the Abyss As human expansion continues on Europa and the need for rarer materials rises, this puts us at odds regularly with the denizens of the Abyssal Plains, and has even led to a discovery of a new species to contend with that is, at least on some level, slightly more hazardous than the others. For decades here on Europa, we only knew of two existing behemoths that lay within its darkest depths. 
the Tribdis, and the Endworm. But as our technology has improved and our adaptations to this frozen moon grow, so does our ability to affect the ecosystem, namely in this case affecting the Abyss. As both submarine crews and the large leviathans lose their lives, it alters the environment, leaving both richer nutrients and artificial structures deep in Europa. And removing the apex predators that ruled over a large swath of the Abyss, has led to openings that are now being filled very slowly by other creatures that are no longer being threatened by large predators. For now, it is only the Latcher moving in to fill these gaps, but I think it's only a matter of time before we start attracting something far worse than the Latcher. With the richer range of nutrients and artificial shelter being given by old submarines, we could be inducing a whole new biome, so to speak, to both new smaller creatures and mayhaps, larger and more dangerous than the Endor. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. I know there are some that probably wanted me to cover the cyborg version of the Endworm, but that will come in due time when I cover the Ancients themselves. So please, until then, have a nice and safe week.